Boy, I hope that shot looked cool because it's going to be a mess to pick up. So there are a lot of things that influence me when it comes to music and guitar playing. You have the obvious things that influence most musicians, which is their instruments, such as guitars. And then I also have like, you know, amplifiers and pedals and that kind of thing. The other obvious thing is artists themselves listening to music and learning techniques and stuff that your favorite artists play. But there is one thing that I have found that also had a huge influence in my technique and how I play guitar. And that is a guitar pick. Late night editing Tyler here. Um, so I got done with this entire video and I realized I'm wearing the same freaking hoodie in this video that I did in my last video. So I just wanted to assure everyone I own more than one hoodie. I just, it's a recent one I got and I like it and I wasn't paying attention and I won't let it happen again. Jazz guitar picks specifically, and to be very particular, the Dunlop Jazz 3. Now, I'll tell you off the bat, I'm a Dunlop artist. Dunlop has not paid me to do this video. They don't know I'm doing this video. And I've used these picks since before I had a relationship with Dunlop. I'll also be featuring other brands of picks because I actually use quite a few different brands and styles of jazz picks. So do with that information what you would like. <laughs> So the Jazz 3 was a major shift in my plane. So it all started when I was in church. I was setting my things up, and I noticed that on like a handrail or something, there was a little tiny red pick just laying there. And I looked at it and realized that it didn't look like any other pick I'd really seen. It was small, had a very small point to it, and it was much thicker than most other picks that I had used. So I picked it up and checked it out, and I asked around, and no one really knew who it belonged to. And I said, okay, well, I'll use it this morning then. And I found that it was a challenge to play it. I actually had a really hard time the first time that I tried to use it. Uh, that morning, I obviously switched back to a regular pick, but I found that it was very small, and it barely pointed out past my fingers, and it was just very difficult to use. But later on, I found it kind of interesting that I had struggled so much to use the pick. I mean, it's a guitar pick, for goodness sake. Like, anyone should be able to use any of them. You have preferences, but to, like, struggle playing one is kind of odd. And this piqued my curiosity, because out of selfishness, I kind of wanted to play a pick that not everyone could play. So why did I stick with the Jazz 3 and why is it the one that I use? The best way to describe it once you're used to it is what I believe Jimmy Dunlop has said about them. Once you switch to a Jazz 3, switching back to a regular pick is like trying to run a 40-yard dash in clown shoes. It really does feel that awkward when I move to a regular size pick. I find them to be more accurate. When I was playing solos and single notes and stuff, I was able to pick the strings more accurately. I got faster at it. And just in general, it really made me think about how I was picking and where I was picking. For a regular size pick, you're not necessarily trying to hit certain points as closely as you are with a Jazz 3. It also just in general has more control in my opinion. You're just able to pick strings more accurately. You can be a little bit more dynamic with it. It's something that once I got used to it, I became a better player. So the last thing that I had to learn to do with this thing is strum. Now, a lot of people look at these and think of them as, like, metal shreddy guys that play them. And if you listen to any of the trio's music, you'll know that I'm not a metal shreddy guy. And one of the things I had to get used to with this was just strumming general chords. You see, because that tip is so small, a lot of times if you're making very broad stroke strumming, you can eat your fingers up and not hit the pick necessarily. The other thing that I really like about it is it allows me to use a finger picking technique that I really like. So I got this technique from a Craig Chikiso instructional video. Hi, I'm Craig Chikiso. Welcome to my Hot Licks instructional video. And that's simply when you're holding the pick, you can take your pointer finger and tuck it into your palm so that way your other fingers become available to finger pick, and then when you're done with that, you can rotate it straight back out. It's a very quick motion. 
Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, since I started using Jazz 3s, I've actually branched out into a lot of different brands and types of jazz picks. Three of my favorites are obviously the Dunlop one because it's the OG and it's the one I have the most of and it's what I got used to playing on. One of my other favorites is a new company called Honey. I started using them last year, and I actually have a couple custom jazz picks that I ordered from them. The last one is one I use a whole lot, and that is the Blue Chip Jazz Pick. I will say that they are incredibly expensive, and it's debatable whether you should ever pay that much for a pick. So yeah, that's why I use Jazz Picks. Uh, Dunlop actually calls it the Cult of Jazz 3, and uh, I can say that I'm in there simply because once you go to these and you get used to them, you, you can't go back. You are, you are in. You are stuck playing Jazz Picks for the rest of your career, most likely. At least that's what I've experienced, and that's what a lot of other testimonies say. Once you get used to them, you just can't beat how these things feel. And sometimes when I'm out playing somewhere at a show or somewhere where I know there's going to be guitar players, I'll take one of my spare ones and I'll set it down somewhere and... Hope that maybe someone finds it and gets curious and might get another cult member. You just can't beat the accuracy, the variety, and uh, they're cute. 